Last time on The Cellcast, the animated series. How are you doing, Jacob? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm kind of excited about the this new frontier we're jumping into. Yes. Most of the stuff comes out on television, and that's where a lot of your, you know, since it's all kind of on a much lower budget than your movies are, right. that's where things tend to can get a little more creative and a little more crazy. Okay, my experience with Star Trek, Star Trek 6, Star Trek, I'm sorry, Star Trek Next Generation, Star Trek here and there, here and there, three of Star Trek. All right, I'm just saying season three is tough. <laughs> okay. Kind of a, a comedy looking at the people who were supposed to die in the first five minutes of the episode to show how serious the situation is before, without killing any of the main cast. It's funny, it's got, be like, now granted, be like, with my limited Star Trek don't worry, I will probably mention every single You probably notice. will. You probably will. Because he does not he wants the show to remain canon, which means you can't just go completely bonkers yeah. with an episode. You do have to stay within the world building the sh- the mo- the franchise has already set up. Cartoons. The animated frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast Podcast. Its continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. Welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. The animated series. Joining me today is a man who uh, is into classical music like the monkeys. Jacob. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> Why, thank you. Lady you your co-host. A man who's just stuck in the lower decks. Welcome, Drew. How are you doing today, Jacob? Man, I'm doing fairly good with everything going on right now. Uh, for the audience don't know, uh, I lost my aunt on my dad's side. Uh, this is my dad's, this is my father's little sister, so uh, if you definitely, if you would, pray and keep your thoughts on my, for my family and all that, would be deeply appreciated. Thank you very much. And as a bit of a programming note, this may affect when next week's episode comes out, but we're playing that by ear. Yeah. All right, so this week we're reviewing the first episode of Star Trek Lower Decks, that being Season 1, Episode 1, Second Contact. Which was written by Mike uh, Mac McMahon. Ma- Mike McMahon? I'm thinking I'm saying it. You say it both ways. Anyway, and it's directed by Barry Kelly. Synopsis is that Ensign Tendi has her first day of work on Starfleet's USS Cerritos, where she meets three fellow support crew members Ensign's Mariner, Boimler, and Rutherford. Meanwhile, Boimler is tasked with a secret special assignment, and Rutherford attempts to keep his dating life intact while an outbreak strikes the ship. As a bit of trivia, I got a couple. Th- I actually got a lot of trivia. Okay. Because I'm sure you're not surprised in the slightest. No, I'm not. Uh, this is the first appearance on all of Star Trek of Romulan whiskey. It is a reference though to Romulan ale, which is so potent it's been Ill- it's illegal in the Federation. Yeah. Uh, the opening uh, thing, uh, opening sequence is a return to the uh, shit beauty shot style that was prevalent from Star Trek the original series all the way through Star Trek Voyager. Okay. You know, it's showing off nice shots of the ship, though it's parodying them. Yeah, it is for the most in part. A lot of ways. Uh, the ones it's closest to, though, I would say is Voyager, as that's the closest one I can think of where you can see a lot of the times a ship coming up to a situation and then mm-hmm. doing something. Yeah. Um, this uh, show reuses the Next Generation's font, and mm-hmm. it features the return of episode titles shown at the beginning of the episode, as that has not been done since Enterprise. Hmm. Uh, all the shuttlecraft are named after forests in California. Mm-hmm. And Cerritos is named after a city in California. And mm-hmm. the ship, if you hadn't followed the theme yet, is California class. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, along with Tendi, who is an Orion, we also see classic Star Trek aliens such as a Benzite, an Andorian, and a Napian. Two crew members in the episode are wearing Geordi LaForge's visor. In the scene where they're on the holodeck and... Boimler, Boimler uh, talks about the sand. He 
kind of references Anakin Skywalker in a line. Really? Yes. He says, uh, sand is... Co- uh, That's sand right. Sand gets everywhere sure. and uh, gives him a rash. And if you remember from Star, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones... Oh, yeah. Anakin says, I hate sand. And it's coarse. It's rough. And it gets everywhere. everywhere. And I do believe that is the first time any reference at all in Star Trek <laughs> has been made to Star Wars. <laughs> that is... To quote quote a a, a Vulcan, fascinating, oh, right? Uh, we see the re- return of the Argo from Star Trek Nemesis. Okay. Uh, Star the Starfleet regulations mentioned four ninety eight seven fifty six twenty five fifteen three forty eight and seventy six have never been mentioned before. Really? Yeah. Huh. So that was just they just really threw up random numbers there, but I did look that up because I was curious. Hmm. Uh. Mariner references Star Trek VI, saying she fought a Yeti in a Klingon prison for her own shoes. This that is was a, funny. That this was... is a reference to Kirk having to fight the blue alien for his coat. Mm-hmm. That was interesting. It's a good thing it had knees. I'm not going the rest of there. Uh, General Order Five is also new, but may have something to do with punishments, considering that General Order Four. Uh, Talks about how you, uh, the death penalty does not ex- uh, does not exist in Starfleet, mm-hmm. but General Order Seven states that if you go to Talos Four, you can be executed. Okay then. So stay away from Talos Four then. <laughs> Generally, a good idea. Okay. Uh, Barnes Rutherford's uh, date mentions uh, hang on, uh, mentions she likes the classical band of the Monkees. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mariner mentions that Boimler will be her chadich, which I'm guessing you don't know what that means. No, I have no it's idea. A, it's a Klingon word. Okay. Introduced in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. And it refers to uh, someone who will... F- it's an honorary title given to someone who stands by... Uh, someone, it, it literally means one who, who fights for another. Okay. But essentially, it's like someone standing next to you in a crisis situation. I got you. In the episode, it comes from uh, Picard is actually Worf's Chadich when Worf goes and uh, tries to... I don't remember if he's going for his honor or his honor's been challenged or something in the Klingon Empire, because it's been a while since I've seen this episode, but something of that nature. Gotcha. And last but not least, Mariner's Rant. At the end of the episode, where yes. she kind of goes off for a bit. She, ref- a bit. she references Spock's death in mm. Wrath of Khan, uh-huh. his rebirth in Search for Spock, and the events of, of the voyage home where she talks about the whales. Mm-hmm. Uh, mentions Sulu fighting with a sword in the original series episode, The Naked Time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she mentions Kirk, captain of the USS Enterprise, NCC 1701. Worf, the security chief on USS Enterprise NCC 1701D and the strategic operations officer on Space Station Deep Space Nine. Mm-hmm. Gary Mitchell from the second pilot uh, where of uh, the original series, Where No Man Has Gone Before. And USS Enterprise NCC 1701D counselor Deanna Troy, who wore a jumpsuit before switching to a standard uniform during the episode Chain of Command. She kind of gets cut off before she gets to she the does. End of that rant, but let's face it, we kind of knew where she was going. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Especially if you know your Star Trek. Mm. Uh, so, before I let you get into it, I want to, well, no, actually, I'm going to let you speak first, and then I'll okay. kind of bounce off of you. Okay. So, this being, be like, when, when did this show start? When did it when, Thursday. Thursday, okay. This previous Thursday is when is when the first episode came out. Okay. So I just watched it before we recorded, and this I've, was my second viewing. So I found myself cringing, but at the same time laughing my head off. Yes, at the exact same time with the fact that this comes from the creator of Rick and Morty, and a show we neither one of us watched. No, by the way, no. I just want to point that out. Yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, yeah, I've tried. <laughs> That's as far as I'm going to go there. Okay, but uh, I enjoyed it. It was it was the uh, it was a little slow into getting into things, but 
if you're looking for from there again, my limited viewing of Star Trek, mm-hmm. this takes everything goes shook. Well, baby with the what 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 the bathwater kind of thing. That's because in a, in a way, it's a new series and yeah. it takes place past everything you've dealt with so far. Yeah. And it really did not reference any specific events you're familiar with. Because that's not what the point of the episode was. Uh, I will say that once you've seen the end and know the twist, Mm -hmm. there are some interesting... The the rest of the episode actually plays out better when you understand... Because that that twist helps you understand why uh, Mariner... Mm-hmm. Acts the way she does. Yeah, in many ways. Yeah, I would definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, the fact that we like we're dealing with the the peons, the guys who do all the dirty work. We're we're dealing from we're working from their perspective, mm-hmm. and and then we get their perspective. Of what the uh, the the guys on the bridge and it's like, oh, they're just looking for glory. They're looking for them to be in history, and in some ways, you look at the this crew up here. The crew, the the main crew in our show, um, is in that way because towards the very, you know at the very end of the show they're like oh Captain uh, uh, the the doctor I don't know what his name is a cat <laughs> oh um, I looked it up I don't remember he's yeah. a Cation huh she is a Cation actually she's a Cation it is a she okay <laughs> okay I did like they made the doctor more of like a like a feline type character mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. Um, it's only the third time they've used that alien race. Really? The uh, the first time was in the original animated series. And then that character was like in the background of one of the movies. Mm-hmm. And I take it back. There was another one that was, uh, well, in uh, Into Darkness. I had to think about it. Uh, <laughs> one of Kirk's scenes in the bedroom was with some Cations. Oh, Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was actually the first one. Whichever, I think it was, and I thought it was into darkness, but mm. doesn't matter. First one. Uh, that was an Orion. I think you're thinking of, which would be like that, Tana. Yeah, but whichever, whichever. There is a difference. Yes, but I enjoy the be like you get to experience what they experience the mm-hmm. the the campiness and the cordiness and the kind of like okay they went there with this. Yeah. It's like, oh, let me show you this really, really cool place in the holodeck. It's like, okay, my knee bleached now. Thank you very much. Uh, well. At, at okay, least they're just I, animated. I have, a, I have defense. I have defense for this. Okay. I do have a defense for this. Do you know, what do you know about Orion, Orions? Nothing. Female Orions specifically. Uh, nothing. Okay. So you are unaware of the green animal women of Orion. Vaguely, As they have been described. Uh, these women secrete uh, very extremely powerful pheromones that make men fall in love with them. Mm. Uh, to the point where, while they appear to be like you know look like they're sex slaves, mm-hmm. the men are actually under their control. I got you. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, they have shown up in a couple episodes of Star Trek before this point. Okay. Uh, and that's what Ta'ana is, is an Orion. Mm. She's a little hung up on being in Starfleet and all this other stuff. I gotcha. But it could be that Mariner misjudged her and just assumed, oh, you're an Orion. Oh, I know what Orion's like. Maybe she was trying to impress her, now, especially now that Boimler was out of the room. It's, an, it's a guess. I don't know. Yeah. So... I might be reading too much into it. Yeah. And so then we get our, we get set up with our situation where they're doing the second contact with this race. Do you have the any information on that? It's a brand new race to Star Trek. They've never shown up in anything before this point, even in the episodes that take place after this in Picard. So I they're, know they're a pig race. Yeah, they're a pig race. They're pig farmers. I don't remember. Uh, Galadarians? So, yeah, Galard- Galardians. Yeah, Gal- Galadarians. Yeah, because he, he literally has to ana- pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, and so then our big bad captain be like gets bit by something. And it's like, oh, it's nothing. Uh, actually, it was the first officer. 
Oh, it's the first officer. Yeah. That's right. I, I keep thinking he's the captain, but like, no, 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 no. no, she, no. He, he's the first officer. Uh, the uh, Cap, Cap Freeman is the captain. Freeman's the captain. Okay. Mariner's mother is the captain. Yes. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> Let's face it. You're listening to the episode. You should be expecting to be spoiled. Yeah, exactly. So the first, the, the number one, you know, comes on. He gets infected, and it turns into a zombie-like outbreak. It is <laughs> Gallardonian, by the way. Gallardonian. Okay, Gallardonians. And so, it's the... You have the situation going on on the planet where our... Um, Merida and... I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing your name. Or Merida? Mariner. Mariner and what's the guy's name? Boimler. Boimler. Okay, so... Admittedly, Boimler's name is hard to say. Yeah, Boimler. Uh, and so Boiler has been charged from the captain. Be like, Hey, make sure if, uh, instant Mariner, 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 uh, does anything out of line, be like, report to me at once. Absolutely. Knowing, having no clue that Mariner, right? Mariner. Mariner. I'm going to get this right. Eventually Mariner is it's, her daughter. It's the other word for a person of the sea, a Mariner. Uh, okay. You've heard of the rhyme of the ancient Mariner. Yes. Same word. Mariner. Mariner. Okay. All right. So we, we're dealing with that situation where Mariner is uh, basically cutting corners in order to help a, uh, basically some pig farmers to get you know stuff they need. Well, and I that mean, shenanigan happens. They're Gallardonian farmers who yeah. have a spider thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. And... That just the, understanding this is from the frame, the same mind of Rick and Morty. I get it, but at the same time, like, oh my gosh, it's okay. It's oh, he's just suckling, she's suckling, you'll be fine. It's, it's a herbivore, no, uh, just wants your, she wants some juice. Oh, <laughs> that's fist. I'm glad Current. I'm not Boimler in this episode. <laughs> Me, either. oh my gosh, be like, I, I feel, I feel bad for the guy's cartoon character, but oh my word. I'd be like, I felt violated watching that. <laughs> but either way, either way, uh, it was funny and all, but then it, it it transitioned very well between what's going on the planet, what's going on the ship. Mm-hmm. And in between this, we have two characters who are trying to date. Yes. <laughs> who are going on their first date. But, like, everything's going smooth. We're in the middle of this crisis. They're, and they're responding to the crisis and still flirting with each other. other. And then, he unfortunately... <laughs> Uh, the maintenance access hatch doesn't a- open during red alert, which distracts him, and she gets tired and walks away. Yeah. It's like, and, and there's a part of you that's going, dude, that's not important. But at the same time, it's like, no, wait, that is his job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's the one who should be helping him at the moment. You but... would think. And so, admittedly, like, he may not have responded in the right way. But no, be still... like, hey, I, hey, completely understand. Be like. The, the fact to be like, I, I've been on a few dates mm-hmm. and like you, you, you wind up saying the wrong words. Or you'd be like, oh, we're going on a roll. And then something just does not click. Yeah. Either, either you're, you're not on the same wavelengths or it's just not meant to be. Mm-hmm. And um, the <laughs> it's so you had this be like Boiler has been, you know, suckled on and beamed back up. Yes. And of and course, he's he secured everything. He ha- the slime from the spider monster yeah. that's been suckling on him. Yeah, <laughs> has the ability to actually completely stop the cure, stop the the virus. It's, it's, yeah, the zombie virus that's spreading all across the ship. And of course, if you can, can't tell from the basic concept of the show, he gets none of the credit. Oh yeah, he he's brought the wor- slime back up there. Yeah. But they're not bringing him up in this. It's like, oh, the doctor ha- is going to get to write a new, uh, uh, some more, pa- some more uh, re- re- uh, articles for a paper or something. Yeah. And and she doesn't want to because it's like, oh, great, more paperwork. Yeah. I, I did like the line to be like, she points the point where like, he's worthless. The slime's what's important. Yes. And I'm like, Ow! everyone, everyone protect the, the slime. slime. I swear that is the name of this episode. Yeah, protect the slime. I yes, I definitely approve on that. And it's it definitely shows the 
the kind of the contrast where you have the lower deck people who are, mm-hmm. who are you know doing their job to the best of their ability and getting none of the credit where the upper decks are just it's all about glory and all this other jazz and getting 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 ahead yeah and you you seem you seem boiler at boiler at the very begin where he is just be like almost worshiping the guys the the captain yeah and so by the end of it he's kind of like be like when when he's uh, in front of the um when he's in front of the captain when she's doing her uh, her uh, star lo- her star date log her ca- or it's her captain's log. Captain's log. Doing her captain's log, and he literally just rolls his eyes. Yeah. Like, okay. I've, I've, because he, I, 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 I she seen, just uh, did her entire captain's log in front of him, and he probably noticed she didn't mention him or the slime mm-hmm. or how the slime got up there. She literally talks only about her senior staff. Yeah. Which means everyone else on the ship, as far as it sounds like, and go jump out an airlock for all that matters. Yeah. Uh, but that's the difference when you're looking at this from a, uh, almost every, every other Star Trek show is focused on the, the, the bridge crew because they're the ones who are driving the ship. Right. This one is, and every, and now all the other ones, those are important ships. Yeah. Just to go quick over it, quick overview, uh, the, uh, original series you had the enterprise which was a uh on a five-year mission so they were outgoing first contacts and stuff like that all the time enterprise d was the flagship of the fleet during that time period right. deep space nine was a space station on the outside of a major uh a major uh route into the uh gamma quadrant and then when the War- Dominion War broke out, it was the front essentially yes. for a lot of that conflict. Voyager was lost in the in an, on the far side of the galaxy, so everyone was important at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original Enterprise was the first starship to ever go out and uh, see everything. Uh, for the first Federation starship to, to go out and make all this first contact. It was literally the first ship, first Federation starship. And then you have uh, you know. Discovery with its uh, magical uh, warp drive. <laughs> well, it's not a warp drive. It's a fungus drive. Fungus drive. It okay. uses a fungus in order to trans in order to instantaneously show up in different places. Yeah. Uh, then you got Picard, where literally it's just a story about him. Yeah. And there's like five other people on the ship, so of course everyone on the ship is important. Yeah. This is the first one really to focus on. The n- not just the lower people, lower people in the ship. It's the first one really to focus on a ship that is the lower decks of ships. Yeah, because it's not the big one. I mean, it, they even have. I, you, I don't know if you notice it, but it's the the, uh, the Ceratos has a yellow accent on it. Yeah, to show that it's an ops uh, ship. It oh, okay. primarily does operations and engineering. Okay. Whereas apparently we'll see later on we'll see some other California classes that have a blue accent because they're more medical and sciences, mm. and a red one that would be more like command operations and such like that. It's the first time they've introduced that coloring scheme to the show, but okay. Honestly, I don't have anything against it. It makes sense to me, mm. uh, and it would make sense that ships the ships we follow for the most part since this point wouldn't have that because they were not, you know, patrol ships essentially. Yeah. Uh, so the thing I want to touch on is about Mariner. Okay. We are at the end of the episode. We see that she's not the reason she is the way she is, is because uh, her parents are shuffling her back and forth between ships. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling when she was young, she was probably a lot like to Anna. Okay. She was raring to go. She was all Federation. She was working her way up the food chain, and then something happened that caused her to be disillusioned. Yeah. Unfortunately, since her parents are both high... Mu- or one of her parents is an admiral, yeah. and the other parent is a captain, mm-hmm. All both of them trying to uh, keep moving up in rank, because that's yeah. the whole... That's what you do. Yeah. Uh, 
she got disillusioned with the whole idea of what Starfleet was. It was no longer going out and helping people. It was all about making yourself look better, I think, is what she was seeing. That's why she acts the way she does in this yeah. episode. It's like that totally makes sense. She doesn't care if uh, about Starfleet protocol and bureaucracy. She's out there to help people. Yeah. And she knew that the this pig family uh, was just going to be ignored because they were either too far out or something. Uh just not high up enough in the totem pole for Starfleet to be able to help him because Starfleet appear- was apparently only, at, and this is normal for the show. Yeah. It was only at this one place, which was obviously the capital city. Yeah. It wasn't going out to the country where the people were. Yeah. Um, so somehow when she was on the first contact mission, she found out about this, at least probably not just these two, this couple, yeah, probably, probably a was, couple of yeah. farmers. She helped along the way. And yeah. it, by the time Boimler caught up to her, yeah, uh, maybe that was the last ones before they had to go back, or maybe that was her first stop and she didn't get to deliver any of the yeah, rest of them. We don't really know. Thanks, Boiler. Um, but I, 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 interesting that mm-hmm. she was able to get one of the ATVs away from it because I would assume those ATVs or actually Argos, uh, would have been a little more uh, kept an eye on since there's only like four on the ship. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, I en- I enjoy the episode for what it is. It's not my f- st- flavor of comedy. Yeah. it's And I wouldn't say the show is great just yet. Yeah. I would say the show has potential. And I am curious to see where we go from here, especially with the previews we saw yeah. at the end, which I have a feeling I know who that Klingon is, and I just can't place who the Klingon is. Hmm. So... Anyway, we'll get we'll get there when we get there. Precisely. So that brings us to the end of another episode of uh, the animated series. Join us next week uh, for the next episode, which will be called Envoys. See you then. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast. Oh, boy. So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page. On Twitter at Jacob B. Heron. On Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. And on Letterboxd at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterboxd at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, thecellcast.podbeam.com, where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Stitcher. Our RSS feed, if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory, please share, review, and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends. You will also find a link to our Facebook group, the Double Feature Podcast Community, where we talk about both animated and live action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast where we talk about live action movies. You can also email us at the cellcast podcast at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say the cellcast, that is with a single L. L.